Hi, I'm Ted Bible, pastor at St. Mark's United Methodist Church, and thank you for joining me today. We're going to be uh, uh, concluding our study on the New Testament book of Jude. But before we get to that, I just want to once again invite you to share any prayer concerns with us, joys or concerns. And you may email those requests to us at limasaintmarks at gmail.com, limasaintmarks at gmail.com, and we would be happy to be in prayer with you. Additionally, if you don't have a church uh, family, we would love to have you come and visit and, and worship with us. Uh, we meet on Sunday mornings at 1015, and our location is at 1110 North Metcalf Street in Lima. Well, last week we covered verses 1 through 14 of the letter that Jude had written. And Jude, as we recall, is a half-brother of Jesus. And he was writing to the early church and, you know, writing to us as well, stating that certain people, that being false teachers, had secretly slipped into the church. They slipped in unnoticed, and their message and their purpose was dangerous to the Christian faith. These people were refusing to recognize who Jesus said that he is, and therefore they were also denying who God is, and thus they are destined for condemn condemnation by God. In my takeaway last week, I once again encouraged you regarding, your, regarding the, the reading of the Bible. I encourage you to be uh, spending time reading the Bible. I encourage you also to, to join a Bible study. And I encourage you to be in prayer every day. These are the tools you need to win the cultural battles that you will face every day. These are tools of truth. This is God's truth. You must know them. You must rely upon those tools and keep them close to you at all times in order to defend the Christian faith against those who wish to discredit it. So today, as I said, we're going to wrap up uh, our study of the book of Jude, and we're looking at verses 17 uh, through 25. And so we'll begin then at verse 17. And he writes, But dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you, in the last times there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the men who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the Spirit. Jude tells us that apostles of Jesus had issued warnings that false teachers and false teachings would happen. And they would happen even more so as the time of Jesus' second return draws near. And that these, they also warned that these false teachings would increase with intensity. In fact, Paul wrote about this threat. And in Acts chapter 20, verses 29 through 31, he said, I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. Even from your own number, men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. In the second letter of Timothy, in chapter 4, Paul also wrote, he says, For the time will come when they will not put up with doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. We also find warnings written in 1 Timothy, in 2 Peter, and in 2 John. And Jesus himself even provided warnings that we find recorded in the book of Matthew in chapter 7 and in chapter 24. Now in verse 18, Jude writes about people who will be scoffers which means that they are either mocking or rejecting the idea that Jesus will one day return, or they are ridiculing those who live lives trying to please God. Jude warns Christians to expect this kind of mocking and this kind of harassment so that they won't be surprised when it comes. In the uh, New, Interna New Revised Standard Version uh, translation of the Bible, in verse 19 it reads, it is these worldly people, devoid of the Spirit, who are causing the divisions. Once again, Jude is referring back to verse 11 from last week and the example of Korah, who tried to cause division amongst the Israelites. And you recall 
that his tactics did not work out so well for him and his followers, nor will it work out well for false teachers that Jude is mentioning as well. Reading on then, verses 20 through 21. He writes, But you, dear friends, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Jude says, build yourselves up in your most holy faith. That means that we are responsible for our own spiritual growth. It means that we cannot wait for spiritual growth to just happen or expect others to make us grow. Jude has shown us the risk associated with associated with relying upon others to inform us of their truth rather than taking responsibility of discovering the truth for ourselves. Once again, it is necessary for us to read the Word of God. It is necessary for us to to join together in Bible study, and it is necessary for us to be in prayer. And I would also suggest that it is necessary for us to be in a house of worship. If you entrust your spiritual growth solely to someone else, then you run the risk of being led astray by a false teacher. The church and your brothers and sisters in Christ can help provide an environment conducive for spiritual growth. But no one can make another person grow in a relationship with the Lord. This responsibility rests individually with each and every one of us. Praying in the Holy Spirit is another way to keep ourselves in the love of God. The battle against wrong living and wrong teaching is a spiritual battle. And one of the ways we fight that battle requires us to be in prayer in the Holy Spirit. Many of our prayers are directed by our own needs, by our own wishes and our own desires. But there is a higher level of prayer that Paul tells us about in Romans chapter 8, verse 26. There he writes, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. We do not know what we should pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. As a child of God, you are not left to your own resources to cope with your own problems. Even when you don't know the right words to pray, and I know some of us have experienced that ourselves, We have the Holy Spirit with us, praying with us and for us, and God hears this prayer. And then in verse 21, Jude says, keep yourselves in the love of God. Now, he doesn't mean live in such a way to make yourselves lovable to God, because Paul tells us in Romans chapter 5, verse 6, that Jesus died for the ungodly. But rather, we are to keep, we are to keep, you are to keep yourselves in the love of God. What that means is you are to keep yourselves in harmony with God's ever-present love. God's love extends everywhere, and nothing can separate us from it. But we can deny ourselves the benefits of God's love. Now, there's an analogy that people sometimes use who, who don't keep themselves in the love of God. And then when they do that, they end up living as if they were lived on the back side of the moon. The sun is always out there, always shining, but they are never in a position to receive the light or the warmth of the sun. An example of this is found in the story of the prodigal son, found in Luke chapter 15. The prodigal son was always loved by the father, but for a time, for a time, he did not benefit from that love because he rejected that love. He stayed away from that love. Reading on then, verses 22 and 23. Jude writes, Be merciful to those who doubt. Snatch others from the fire and save them. To others show mercy, mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. Jude now tells us what we must do with those who have been influenced by these certain men, influenced by these false teachers. Using wisdom, 
That being wisdom that comes from God, wisdom that comes from our prayer time. We approach different people in different ways. Being sensitive to the Holy Spirit, we can now, or we can know when we should provide comfort and when we should provide a rebuke or correction. Christians should not abandon a friend flirting with false teaching, but rather they should help the friend discover the shortcomings of the false teaching, and they are to do it in Christian love. No matter how misleading their doctrine, we are not allowed to hate them or to be unconcerned about their salvation. Each one of us is called to witness to our faith, and we are not to take it lightly. It is a matter of eternal life and eternal death. But be very careful, and don't get yourself sucked in to their sinful ways. Don't listen to their false teachings. Rely upon your knowledge. Rely upon what you have read and studied in the Bible, and rely upon the speaking of the Holy Spirit to you through your prayers. Jude closes this letter with what has become a famous doxology. Doxology is just a fancy word for a brief declaration of praise to God. Jude's doxology reminds us of God's care and of our destiny. Verse 24 then reads, To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. Jude's message of warning in this letter might have, dep- dep- might have depressed and discouraged his readers. And it can even be discouraging to us today. Perhaps his original readers thought that with so much false teaching and immorality surrounding them, very few, cre- very few Christians would ever reach their destiny of heaven. But here Jude reminds them, and here Jude reminds us as well, that the answer lies only in the power of God, for God and God alone is able to protect you from falling prey to the ungodly ways of the false teachers. You are not able to protect yourself. And since God is forever faithful, we won't have to come before him with feelings of shame and guilt, but rather we will be able to stand before him in great joy. And then verse 25. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forever. Amen. Jude now encourages us to remember God's wisdom, God's glory, God's majesty, God's power, and God's authority. These are the attributes that Jesus gives to God but that the false prophets, those false teachers, by their actions, deny of God. The book of Jude is a book of warning, but it closes with words of supreme confidence in God. Dangerous times should make us trust in our almighty God. The takeaway from the message today is this. When we compare the passages found in the book of Jude, we discover who is really responsible for our safekeeping. Jude began the letter by addressing those who have been called by God and who follow Jesus Christ. And then he urged Christians. In fact, he gave them a charge. He gave them an order. He said, we found in our reading today, to avoid false teachers and to keep themselves in the love of God. At the end of the letter, Jew concludes in his doxology with a recognition that it is ultimately God who keeps us from stumbling and from falling. Keeping us spiritually safe is God's work. But you could always tell the people he is working in because they are working too. You will find them reading their Bibles. You will find them participating in Bible study. And you will find them with an active prayer life. God doesn't call us to simply let the Christian life happen to us. In other words, we can't just sit back and and claim the title of Christian or Jesus follower and assume that all will be fine 
and that we don't have to put forth any work. It just doesn't work that way. But rather, God has called us to know him. God has called us to know his truth. God has called us to be in partnership with him and to go and to tell others about Jesus, the one who is our Savior, the one who is our Redeemer, the one who is our Lord. Let us pray. Father God, we know that there are many dangers and difficulties in life that challenge our faith in you. Lord, we desire to love you more, to know you better, to keep Jesus as the center of our lives and to grow in grace and to grow in knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Keep us and give us the wisdom to discern what is not from you. Enable us to have ears to hear the promptings of the Holy Spirit. And in your mercy, keep us under the shadow of your protection. In Jesus' name we pray today. Amen. I'd just like to say thank you for your prayer support of uh, the ministries here at St. Mark's and for your financial gifts. And if you would like to support us financially, you may do so by mailing your gift to St. Mark's United Methodist Church, 1110 North Metcalf Street, Lima, Ohio, 45801. And until next time, I pray God's blessing be upon you. And I pray that you will be in the Word. I pray that you will find a Bible study, uh, just somebody else to sit down and, and read and talk about the Scriptures together with. And I pray that you will be in prayer daily as you draw closer to God and you come to know Him better and His desires for you. Go in peace.